So I've got two transistor circuits drawn out here that uh, should look fairly similar. These are these are similar to to what we've kind of already been exploring, but I want to think of them in in a little bit different way. In that, so each of these has kind of an input and an output, and I want to think of these inputs and outputs in terms of voltage. Um, and of course, transistors are are current switches, but um, if this input, for example, is is a voltage, then that'll uh, if it's a positive voltage, like, let's say it's plus five volts, then that's going to create a current, and, and of course, the, switch the transistor on. And if it's zero volts, then there will be no current, and the transistor will will be off. So we can think of this in terms of these inputs either being on or off, five volts or zero volts, which which will help us out when we get into digital logic, where we where we deal with ones and zeros, and so. And in fact, we can actually just start talking about ones and zeros now, as long as we keep in mind that a zero means zero volts, and a one means plus five volts. Um, and so I'll, I'll actually just talk in terms of zeros and ones being our inputs and our outputs, because our input can either be a zero, zero volts, or a one plus five volts. And, and actually what we'll see is that the output is also gonna be either one of these. So let's just take a look at this circuit on the left to start with and see what happens when its input is zero volts. So if I have zero volts here, and actually I'll make a little table down here just to keep track of what's going on. So I have an input, and my input can be either a zero or a one, and I have an output, which we will see can also be either a zero or a one. So if my input is zero, so I have zero volts coming in, then the transistor is gonna be off because there's no current. Remember, we have this, this base current that has to flow in order for the uh, in order for the collector current to flow. Oops, that should be I. Collector current to flow. So, with no base current flowing, there's no collector current flowing, and so the, our output is not is not connected in any way to five volts because the transistor is cut off, um, and so the output is connected through this resistor to ground. So if we measured the voltage between ground and our output, we get zero volts. And so our output, in this case, is zero. So our input is zero, and our output is zero. Now let's look at the case where our input is one. So if our input is one, which, remember, means plus five volts. So we're using, we're using, five, we're using one to symbolize plus five volts, or, or I guess another way to think of it is we're using plus five volts as, as kind of our, our, our symbol for, for the notion of one. But anyway, um, if our input is one, then we're going to have uh, that five volts, and so we're going to have a current flowing um, across from our base to our emitter. And so when that current is flowing, assuming there's there's enough current, and we're, and we're assuming that there's enough current to get the transistor into saturation, which means that current will flow unrestricted from plus five volts to ground. So when that's happening, if current is flowing unrestricted from plus five volts to ground, if we were to measure um, our voltage from our output between output and ground, output is basically directly connected to plus five volts because we have we have current flowing unrestricted from that plus five volts. So in this case, our output is going to be one. So this, at first glance, doesn't seem to be terribly interesting. We put five volts in over here, we get five volts out over there. We put zero volts in over here, we get zero volts out over here. But of course, we saw before that this output can drive a whole lot more current than, than the input might be able to. So we might have our input have a, a relatively low amount of current, um, but then our output is able to drive more current. And there are a couple different names for, for this circuit that I want you to be familiar with. Um, one of them is, 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 this is called an emitter follower. And let me, let me rewrite this. I apologize, my, my handwriting is terrible. Um, emitter follower. emitter follower. And the reason this is called an emitter follower is basically because the emitter, this is the emitter of our, and of course this is the collector, this is the base of our transistor, the emitter follows the input. It follows the base. So the emitter follows the base, so this is called an emitter follower. Another name for this um, might be a buffer. And um, basically, a, a buffer just is a is a logic device that takes whatever its input is and gives it to you as the output. And there's a symbol for the buffer that we'll use when we get into digital logic, and it's basically just a triangle like this. And this is our input over here, 
and this is our output over here. And so whenever you see this symbol, when we get into digital logic, it basically means a circuit that does this. And it may not be implemented exactly like this with a transistor and a resistor. It might have other components in it. Um, it might be a little bit more complicated, um, but effectively it will do this. It will take whatever voltage is on the input and it'll give, and it'll give that same voltage level on the output. Um, and actually, it may take a, a range of voltages that signify one on the input and give out um, a, maybe a, a little bit more voltage on the output. It may boost the voltage. Um, but, but effectively, whatever your definition of zero is on the input, if, if that's what you have there, then you'll get whatever your definition of zero is on the output. And whatever your definition of one is, if it's plus five volts, if you see that on the input, then that's what you'll see on the output. And that's what a buffer does. Um, this, this circuit is, is also called an emitter follower. So you might see both terms. Now, moving on to this circuit, we, we actually just built one of these, uh, you may recall, um, but we can, we can go through the same process here and look at our input and our output. And if our input can be either zero or one, if the input is zero, then the transistor is, there's no current flowing um, across the base. Our, our, our base current is zero uh, because our voltage is zero, so no current flows. And so the transistor will be cut off and our output will be tied through this resistor um, to plus five volts. And so our output will be one. And another name for this resistor that you might, you might, might come across is called a pull-up resistor. Pull-up resistor. And that's because it basically pulls up this output. So this output um, is, is being pulled up to five volts um, unless the transistor turns on. Um, and so, well, actually, let me just, we'll back up a second. Um, so when this is zero, the output is one. When the input is one, let me just erase these. When our input is one, then the transistor is, we, we now have current flowing. So this is five volts coming in here. And so we have current flowing to ground. And so the current flowing across the base is going to create a current flowing across the uh, collector to the emitter. And with this current flowing here, um, our output is now going to be at a lower voltage because our output is effectively going to be connected to ground. And so we're going to have zero coming out here. And this is, this is what we saw in the last video. Um, we, we, we built one of these. Uh, and so when our input is one, our output is zero. And so, like I said, this is kind of called a pull-up resistor because if, if the transistor is, is conducting um, or, or if, it's, if it's in saturation, our output is kind of connected to ground, but if the transistor goes away, then the resistor pulls it up to plus five volts. And that's why it's kind of called a pull-up resistor. So you'll see that. You might also see pull-down resistor. You could think of this as a pull-down resistor. So when the transistor is off, our output is pulled down to ground. Um, but then when the transistor comes on, um, the, the, trans the transistor is going to give less resistance than this resistor. And so our output voltage will, will go up to plus five volts or very nearly plus five volts. Um, so with that in mind, there are um, also, a couple names for this circuit over here, um, and actually the most common name that you'll see for this is called an inverter. Inverter, and there's also a logic symbol for that, and it looks very similar to the buffer, except that it has a little, uh, a little bubble on its output. So this is our input over here, and this is our output over here, and uh, likewise, whenever you see this symbol um, in a logic diagram, it basically means that we're talking about a circuit like this. And again, it doesn't have to be exactly this circuit with one transistor, one resistor. It just has to be a circuit that obeys this particular, this particular um, truth table. So whenever, whatever the input is a zero, the output will be a one. Whatever the input is a one, the output will be a zero.